Hi everybody, welcome back to Growth Hacker TV. I'm Casey Armstrong and I'm happy to welcome Patrick Blasevitz, the New York Times best-selling author of The Lean Entrepreneur and the co-author of self-published cult classic, The Entrepreneur's Guide to Customer Development. He's been flown around the world to speak with and hold workshops with companies such as Google, Qualcomm, Pitney Bowes, Telefonica, Ericsson Intuit, Capital One, 7-Eleven, just to name a few. You've probably seen him on the New York Times, Wall Street Journal, Harvard Business Review, TechCrunch, Panda Daily, and Entrepreneur. He's a mentor at 500 Startups, an advisor at Chromatic and other startups. Just last year, his site Paleo Hacks was acquired and as they were enjoying over a million units a month and acquired nearly 200,000 members. I'm sure I'm forgetting a handful of other things if that's possible. But along with Sean Ellis and Keaton Shaw, you coined the term growth hacking, which uh, I'm sure we'll dive into a bit later. But anyways, quite the list of accomplishments. So um, I might know the answer to this, but what, what, what else are you working on? Uh, so yeah, so like, uh, as you know, I'm going to be in, in, uh, in Europe this summer with my family. Uh, I'm going to be there from end of May till mid-August, uh, working with my co-founder Gabor. Uh, uh, hanging out with family and friends, and then you and I are going to do some uh, some workshops and seminars on growth hacking and full stack marketing. So, hold on, I'm going to pull it up real quick. Our dates are somewhere here. Yeah, so, I guess you know to talk about I guess what kind of uh, what motivated you to spread this in 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 Europe and uh, you know some some of the other speakers and whatnot. Yeah, so the, the so uh, little backstory. So I'm uh, I'm a dual citizen. I'm I'm, uh, I'm an EU citizen vis-a-vis -vis my Hungarian citizenship, and then uh, I'm also an American citizen. And so I spent a lot of time in Europe and states. And one thing you see, uh, sort of a glaring difference in the startup ecosystems between the United States and Europe is that Europeans tend to be a little bit less aggressive and a little bit behind in terms of the latest marketing tactics. Uh, Americans tend to be, uh, again, more aggressive, perhaps too much so, but, uh, uh, but tend to really push the envelope in, in, in marketing. And so uh, I think that doing a full stack marketing event where we, where we teach sort of the fundamentals of the basics of digital marketing uh, can provide an incredible amount of value to digital marketers, to startup founders, to product managers, um, anything that marketing touches, which is almost everything. Uh, in the startups these days, uh, we can help a lot. And then also teach them a bunch of cool growth hacks from stuff that worked, right? So, you know, Paleo Hacks, uh, you know, we had a million people a month visit Paleo Hacks. Uh, it did really well. We had, you know, the, the email list was, you know, greater than 200,000 when we sold it. Um, there's a lot of things we did well on that site uh, and learned a lot. And, uh, you know, I had, a, for example, I think I had a, a Paleo infographic that did really, really well. It's one of like the best email harvesting machines I've ever built. Um, and so there's a lot of lessons there that we can pass on to. They're not, it's not rocket science. Uh, and we can pass on those, those lessons in these cool workshops. So I'm excited. You know, we're going to be nice. in, in uh, Madrid, Dublin, London, Amsterdam, Berlin, Munich, Vienna, Budapest. So I'm really excited. It's going to be a great summer. And um, anybody who wants to go, by the way, should go to growth ship. SHIP.com. I think we got them up there. Nice. And um, yeah, as you and I have talked about plenty of times, whether people are in Europe or the US or anywhere else for that matter, um, but you know, Europe in particular, they're, they're like hyper smart, so many like hyper smart people from, from the technical side. Um, but you know, if you don't validate the product and really look for the marketing opportunities, which is you know, what kind of sprouted Growth Hacker TV. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's all for naught. And so obviously there's, there's a, there's a huge opportunity. But by the way, if there's anybody who's listening to this or watching this, who's like a really good marketer, but wants to team up with some good technical talent, they should definitely head over to Europe <laughs> and head to like Budapest or, or Vienna or Berlin or London. There, like you said, a lot of good technical talent, uh, but a lot less so sort of online hustler, digital marketer. And so if you're looking to do a startup, there's, I know there's, you know, I, we, I get asked probably once a week by my friends in Europe, like, do you know any, you know, growth hackers, you know, growth marketers that would want to join an early stage startup or, you know, become a founder. So anyone listen to this, go to Europe. If you're a, if you're a, if you're a hustler, uh, you can find really good technical talent there and you guys can probably build something very cool.
There you go. There's your hack for finding that go. CTO, the coveted CTO that everybody is chasing for, that that Rails developer in, in San Francisco. <laughs> Actually, another hack is if you're if you, let's say you're a particularly good uh, you know business person, and let's say you're good at BD and partnerships and selling. It seems to me the hardware folks. Uh, another case where like I've been to a few hardware meetups, and it's almost like you know ninety percent technical folks who are begging, looking for. Uh, looking for CEO type uh, founder partners uh, where you got a lot of smart people doing super cool things. Uh, my friend Nick Pinkston actually runs the, the San Francisco Hardware Hackers Meetup. He's a CEO of a, a company called Plethora, 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 I think. Anyhow, I went to a couple of their meetups. Incredibly smart people doing really cool hardware things uh, and they are like dying for, for non-technical you know, uh, help in terms of sales and marketing and just Getting shit done. So another another hack. If you're a growth if you're a growth guy and you're looking for someone technical, go to Europe or go to these hardware meetups. <laughs> yeah, marketing getting its uh, its credit. I mean, with people like Paul Graham publishing posts like "growth equals startups" and whatnot. Um, obviously, absolutely, growth is is imperative for success. So speaking of growth hacking, like I mentioned before, I'm sure people want to hear like. Uh, not only how it was coined, but you know where and and why. So you want to jump into that? Yeah. So that's actually a pretty fun story. So this is back in 2010. Uh, Sean Ellis, who's a who's a friend of, of of mine and yours, and Heat and Shaw. So it was Sean Ellis, Heat and Shaw, and I. We were grabbing drinks at a restaurant called Memphis in uh, in Orange County, and we're just kind of hanging out. Um, um, you know, jab it away, you know, and Sean was, I don't think Sean had started his, his latest startup yet. And he was doing some consulting before kind of kicking off his thing. And one of the startups that he was consulting for, they said, Hey, Sean, we want to hire you. And Sean said, well, look, I'm, I'm kind of busy with doing other stuff, but what's, what, how can I help you? And they said, well, look, we're looking to hire someone. We want someone that does that what you do. And so we want some help filling this VP of marketing position. And so Sean Sean sort of looked at their uh, looked at their uh, their job description, and he was talking about it with us. He goes, "You know, I don't like that's a pretty good job description uh, for a VP of marketing, but I'm not a VP of marketing." And you know, and remember, you know, Sean had a ton of success at Dropbox uh, before that, Log Me In, and then later on at Lookout, uh, Zobni. You know, he, Sean sort of has this. Uh, uh, you know, Midas touch when it comes to growth, right? He knows how to recognize it early, and then he knows how to uh, how to really bend those growth curves, right? And so, super talented guy, and, and he, he said, look, you know, I don't know, I, I'm not a VP of marketing, even though I sort of play one on TV sometimes. And so, again, we were drinking, I remember actually we were drinking mint juleps, which is like my favorite cocktail to drink, and we're drinking... I won't tell anybody you said that. Yeah. And... Uh, well, it's, so Memphis is a southern restaurant. It's really good, and uh, they have really good mint juleps. But uh, it was a hot day, and uh, and then we're just kind of kicking around, thinking like, what we call someone, and, and we're trying to suss out what was, what is, what is, the, what does Sean do differently than most people? Uh, that's not to say that you know growth hackers didn't exist before him. And in fact, one of my talks, I talk about uh, a woman in Brownie Wise. Brownie Wise was one of the original growth hackers. She. Um, she helped uh, kickstart Tupperware, actually, back in post-World War II Americana. Uh, there's also a guy named Daniel Henry Conviler, who was P Pablo Picasso's partner, an art dealer. He was very much a growth hacker, too. Anyhow, the, so talking to Sean, and Sean's like, I'm not, a, and, and really what the, the difference is between growth hacking and marketing, I think, is uh, marketing, you're typically executing on, on, understood and well-known markets. That's not to say that it's easy, because good marketing is always hard, and good marketing is always cherished and, 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 and hard to find. Uh, but generally speaking, there are, you can, you, can execute, you can write a plan, and you can execute on that plan, and you know the channels ahead of time, and you have a pretty good understanding of how they need to be executed. On. Not to say there's no room for improvisation or no room for creativity. It certainly is. Um, but... Uh, it tends to be more focused on execution, executing in the known. Whereas growth hacking, right? The, the reason growth hacking is so important to startups because in the startups, when you're doing something really technical or something really interesting, theoretically, you should be in some unknown space, right? Otherwise, you're not a startup, right? And 
and in that case, there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, and how to reach your customers, what sort of message, what channels work, uh, what's the value proposition, um, you know, uh, all those things, you, you, you know, kind of going back to lean startup roots, you have some strong opinions on them, but invariable, invariably there's always some change. Not always necessarily, you know, wholesale change. Like I, I've been right on a few things. I've had some really good strong guesses about whether it's paleo or even super powered that like I pretty much nailed, but I've also been wrong on some things too. The, the point is that growth hacking is about, uh, uh, I think, about very fast uh, iteration. I think Sean calls it high-tempo experimentation nowadays. Mm -hmm. um, fast iteration experimentation. And then the biggest thing for me, uh, Sean and others might disagree, but I actually think the, the, sort of the growth hack to rule them all is uh, the one around finding new channels. Actually, I think that's like the greatest, that's the greatest, you find a new channel, uh, you will make gazillions of dollars. You want to give a quick example? Yeah, so I can give you a couple. So, so like the story I like to tell about, I talk about is Tupperware because it's not a tech story, so it's sort of easier to understand. So back in, um, oh yeah, so, so so if I could jump in there real quick, because um, because you and I have spoken about this, you know, many many times, and um, you know, you're a huge proponent of medium of the me is the message. Yep. So this this kind of is in parallel to that, or. Or is this? Yeah, absolutely. So that that so that's that's a uh, a famous quote uh, by uh, oh, what's his name? Marshall McLuhan. Marshall McLuhan. Thank you, Marshall McLuhan, the, the communication theorist, who was who was pretty much very much out there, but he had a knack for saying very witty and pithy things that really summed up some big ideas. And so the medium is the message is one of those one of those uh, one of his most famous uh, uh, books and actually uh, thing uh, quotes. Um, uh, another one is we shape the tools and the tools shape us, which is profoundly true and, and actually shapes a lot of how we think about things that super powered. Um, but I can, I can jump into some examples about media. Yeah, let's, let's, let's get some examples and some actual stuff for everybody. Sure. So I'll give you a non-tech example. So the, the Tupperware example is the one that's most interesting. The, the, in a nutshell, the, the, the medium is the message. What, what McLuhan is saying there is that most people take the information about, let's say, a product – not via the actual product, but how they what context that product is presented in, right? Which sounds sort of um, which sounds sort of uh, um, obvious, but but for some reason, especially tech folks, uh, don't seem to understand it. Whereas uh, I think like the people who work in fashion or or restaurant touring or art, they they understand this very at a very deep level. You might say they even grok it. Uh, whereas uh, tech folks, you know, often you run into engineers all the time that expect their products and their value propositions to be uh, evaluated on merit alone. And unfortunately, humans just aren't like that. And so, so McLuhan's famous example is when you're sitting at a bar next to your best buddy and you're drinking a beer and your best buddy goes, hey, you know, do you hear crime is up? And you take a sip of your beer and you kind of shrug your shoulders and you kind of talk about whatever football. That's a very different experience than if you're sitting around the kitchen table with your family and your kids. And then Walter Cronkite says, hey, crime is up in your neighborhood. Right? And you experience the exact same message very, very differently in those contexts. Um, and the same is true for, for, selling, um, uh, for selling and promoting and marketing products. And so... You know, we, we think of innovation as an advantage in the tech industry, but it's really a barrier to be overcome at the same time. Because when you do something innovative, you're actually breaking context. And if you break context, what that means is typically the, 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 the common mediums, the common channels aren't actually going to be helpful for you to promote your product. And that's really hard for people to understand. Right, and so the example that I like to think about is with Tupperware. So this guy named Earl Tupper developed Tupperware um, back uh, post World War II. Um, had this you know cool plastic product. It was called the Wonder Bowl. It had won design awards. He'd actually got it into retail establishments, you know, hardware stores and Mace, places, department stores like places like Macy's. Um, and he'd be sitting there next to the ceramic dishware, and it wasn't selling at all and, because people didn't understand why they would need Tupperware. 
and uh, and he had a great product. Uh, he had retail distribution, but he had no sales. And he ended up meeting a woman called Brownie Wise, uh, and Brownie Wise was this like like phenom uh, uh, saleswoman, just super talented, super enthusiastic, and very smart. And she developed the Tupperware Party. And the Tupperware Party was this part social event, um, part, you know, obviously sales event. And uh, it ended up being the, their main channel for moving Tupperware. Um, and uh, she had to figure out how to provide the appropriate context for Tupperware, which is a great product. But the, the, the medium of Macy's, sitting next to the, the ceramic dishware at Macy's, uh, was not the right medium for that message, uh, and the the right medium had to be had to be developed, and so that's why I think she's sort of the one of the original growth hackers. And if you look at sort of the history of innovation, you see a lot of that. A lot of the companies that uh, have really uh, innovative products end up either hijacking or building new mediums, wherein they can provide the appropriate context um, and. Uh, when I, when I looked at a lot of the innovation literature when we were writing The Lean Entrepreneur, I noticed this. You saw a lot of this um, uh, in you know, innovation going back hundreds of years. And then I was telling my friend Venkata Shirao about it. And he's the one who's like, oh, this is just like McLuhan's medium as a message. And I'm like, that's exactly right. So I think about the medium as a message in, in, for startups is if you, do something, if you do something innovative, you have to find an equally innovative medium to push your message down. Do you have some good, some good examples, I guess, of startups semi recently that have? Yeah. So, well, it's interesting. So, like, let, let's talk about like the Dropbox one. It's interesting, right? Dropbox pioneered this, this, you know, the two sided referral system, right? And it blew up and really well. But now everybody does it and like doesn't work at all, right? Mm -hmm. uh, most recently, I, I talked to this, uh, talked to my friend Patrick Smith of Power Supply. So he's doing uh, ready to eat prepared meals for. Uh, different fitness segments, so like the paleo folks, the CrossFit folks, yoga folks, uh, I think gluten-free, dairy-free, and um, he's doing a masterful job, and he bootstrapped to to seven figures, uh, and he's raised a little bit of money, but he's doing a masterful job because he's built a new medium where now, instead of, if you're you know a hardcore CrossFitter or a yoga person, you're eating paleo or you're, you're a vegan, now you can pick up these meals at the yoga studio or at the CrossFit box or at the gym. And so he's building this network of distribution points uh, that, that align with his segment's natural habitat, as it were, right? And Removing friction. Removing friction. And it's very simple. Like, let's say you're a guy, you're a single guy, and you know, you're, you know, let's say 25. After work, you go do CrossFit you know, with your friends. You're super jacked and like, of course, you're going to go eat a great, you know, organic ribeye and kale salad. Why would you go to a store where you can pick up a great one right at the CrossFit and you don't have to go to the store, right? Uh, I suspect Patrick is going to do very well. Uh, yeah. It, it because well, plus, plus that, I mean, especially in an industry like that, I mean, now he's like doing sales more at scale versus uh, the, the one-offs. Um, Absolutely. You and I always talk about partnerships and getting these big wins. That's, that's, I love that idea. Yeah, I mean, again, if you look at also, like, you look at, like, uh, you know, Hollywood, the wars, like, the big wars are always around distribution, right? It's, and it's always been, like, distribution is just brutal, brutal, brutal game. And that's why, you know, he who distributes sort of wins, right? That's why you get to, like, the, the distributors always hold all the cards and um, and uh, it's... Well, you see, like, the cool, the cool partnerships, like, uh, the, the Shrek toys at McDonald's or something like that. Um, right, right, absolutely, absolutely. So... So yeah, that's that's a recent one. I'm trying to think of another one I see. What did I see the other day? Um, I'm trying to think of some more good examples. Uh, I think actually VR is going to be huge. I think you're going to see some really interesting things out of VR. That's a, that's that's a new medium. Uh, there's going to be there's going to be multiple mediums within VR. I think Bitcoin is interesting, right? Like no one's figured out exactly what's going to happen with Bitcoin. That's going to be effectively a new medium, and someone's going to make, or many people are going to make a lot of, a lot of money. That's why you know a lot of folks are really hyped up about Bitcoin, uh, not because necessarily it's a cryptocurrency, but it's a new medium, right? Um, mm -hmm. I'm trying to think of some good examples. What What about with uh, your with 
uh, your experience? Like, what about with, like, Lean Entrepreneur or Paleo Hacks or Superpower? Yeah, you know, so uh, with Lean Entrepreneur, you know, we did some good marketing. We did some growth hacking. I don't think we found any new, new, new mediums, but we did some cool stuff, right? So one of the reasons for our success uh, is... You know, we did, for example, we partnered with American Airlines, uh, and they very generously flew us around the country for our book tour, um, and so we're very thankful to them. And, you know, they had never sponsored a book tour before. They'd never been pitched a book tour before, uh, but they, they did it. We had the same, you know, they had an initiative to support small businesses and startups, and, and uh, they really liked the lean message and, and, and what Brant and I were about. So it was a great partnership. I think that helped us tremendously. Uh, to uh, jump in there real quick, I think uh, what I love there is um – you, you know, they might have been uncomfortable. You kind of had to educate them a little bit, but uh, you know, if you won't get anything if you don't ask. Oh, hundred percent, hundred percent. They were great to work with, so I'm really thankful. Um, what else? You know, the, actually, the books behind you—you you can see it right by the, the orange book—is right behind you. You know, something else we did that was kind of cool. That I, I got paid for that. Yeah. What? Well, well, something that didn't take off like I wanted it to is the all the art is done by a guy named Fig Grimlock. Who's actually a really good artist? Uh, not just really, I mean, he's a fantastic artist, and uh, he's not just an illustrator. He actually uh, really gives deep, sort of symbolic and metaphoric thought to what he does. And so we commissioned him to do all the art, uh, and then open source the art so anybody can use it. And uh, so they're freely available on our site, and uh, you know we use the art in our book cover. I was hoping that would drive things. Unfortunately, it didn't. It did. It was great. I'm glad we did it. It was a great experiment. I think the book turned out great. His art made our book. A lot better. Uh, he's a very talented guy, but it didn't drive sales or adoption like I, I wished it had. But I still think it was worth definitely doing. Mm -hmm. um, what else? We did? You know, we drove a lot of pre-sales. We had a lot of partners, so we did our own you know crowdfunding campaign where we put up a. Uh, we, actually, this is a fun story. Uh, we put up a uh, um, this funny video that I got I sourced on Fiverr. Um, we sourced this thing on Fiverr and we had like this guy, uh, <laughs> we had this guy do a, a Christopher Walken invitation and I think I paid, ended up paying like 100, 150 bucks for it and uh, we put it up on, on the landing page and I think we had 500 orders within uh, you know a few weeks time and we hadn't even written a word um, and then uh, I also remember like none of the Europeans got who Christopher Walken was and so people either like kind of laughed like oh that's kind of funny but other people like that guy's voice is so annoying. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I love that. That's the, I mean, just, you don't need to spend a bunch of money. And also, like you said, you know, with the, with the fake Grimlock stuff, like it worked well. It helped sell the book because it, it, you know, it helped uh, illustrate your points and the cover looked awesome, et cetera. But it didn't necessarily have like a huge direct lift. But, um, you know, there's, there's a bunch of small tests you can run, like the Fiverr idea with... Yeah. With, uh, and then getting somebody to illustrate it. I remember when you launched that video, that was awesome. Um, and it obviously picked up, especially everybody who knows Christopher Walkney has such a distinct voice. Right. Uh, yeah, we did, the, you know, it's actually too, we did the, the, the book trailer video, that actually worked out really good. So we partnered, uh, we, we, our friends Jeremy and Abby, um, they are, um, I don't know what the company's called, Jaded Media, they did our, they did the book trailer video that Brad and I were in. And if you go to leanentrepreneur.co, you can see that video. And it sort of tells our story. That actually did it. That was a phenomenal video. And people would email us, email us. Like they would land on the page, they would buy our book, pre order our book, and they would email us, like, your video is awesome. <laughs> uh, and so, you know, in, in, in that, so that book trailer, that storytelling that, that there, that actually added a lot and that, that made us look, um, you know, made us look professional, made us look cool, made us look fun. And uh, that video actually helped open a lot of doors for us, actually. That, that actually did really great. So, if well, like you mentioned that too. It's, it's just like you know why again why the Growth Hacker TV something like this is around. Um, you know, you're you're able to with the video obviously um, blowing up everywhere. You know, you're able to create more of a connection with with your readers when before it's like uh, you know the book's out there and the author's kind of untouchable. Yeah. Obviously, things are changing quite a bit now, so you might as well embrace these these other mediums. Oh, absolutely. I, actually, that's the big thing that's happening in publishing, right? There's, there's a shift. Me, the book as a medium is shifting, right? Like we call this always happens, right? Like we call an ebook an ebook. It's not really a book, right? Or like an iPhone is not really a phone, right? Because most of the time, I don't use it to make calls. I use it to do all these other things. So we're, we're mediums. The medium itself is shifting. 
You're also seeing this with like more and more authors doing info products, right? Where, especially in the how-to space, right? So being able to connect with your, with your audiences via video is very powerful. Being able to teach them certain things uh, and, and reiterate certain points via video, and not just text, um, uh, webinars. And at some level, these things have quote unquote always been around, but with the tools now, uh, uh, the, the tools uh, now are, I mean, just amazing what you can do on a, you know, on a standard issue laptop or even iPad, right? Um, and smart, savvy authors are, are taking advantage of this. And so if, anyone, if there are any authors out here, like think about that how, in terms of promoting your book, what you can you, what can you do? Guys like um, Ryan Holiday, uh, Tucker Max, those guys understand this game. Like Tim Ferriss, I mean, those guys understand this game very well. Tim did a very cool, actually here's a Tim, Tim did a very cool growth hack where he packaged content with BitTorrent, right? So BitTorrent had these bundles where they would, you would get free content of Tim's on his, on his launch. And it was just free content, and, but it ended up driving a lot of traffic and a lot of sales, right? That was Tim and Ryan exploring with a new medium for, for Tim's message. I thought that was pretty cool. Nice, and, and, and like you mentioned, use an iPad or even an iPhone. Um, I, I can't believe I'm blanking on his name, the CEO of Fullscreen. Oh, um, George Stropolis. Yeah, so George mentioned, you know, some of these, some of these, uh, you know, YouTubers or, or whatnot, these people with huge followings, they have the, they're making tons of money, um, not necessarily through YouTube or from Google, but, you know, from, from product, etc. So they can easily afford the, the studio equipment, etc. But it's because they use their iPhone, you know, they, the, their audience feels a closer connection. So everything doesn't have to be, Crazy expensive. I know Wistia has an awesome video of you know for one hundred and nine dollars or something. You can basically create like a studio look in your office, such as this. Not that I created that, <laughs> um, you know. But but j just get it. Try it with your with your iPhone and, and get it out there and test it. And, you know. Uh, I I, mean, I totally works. agree. I mean that's the the the. I was thinking about like product hunt the other day, right? There's so many every day more and more products. Some are serious, some aren't serious, some are silly, some are are are, are like very exciting. And like, have we ever had a time where the you know the the it's like the globe has united around building interesting things, right? And the answer is no, right? I mean, there's always been tinkers and hackers and makers and craftsmen, but we've never had a time when like. Literally any young person or even old person is, you know, a few clicks away from producing something and expressing themselves, whether it's a book, whether it's a video, whether um, uh, it's a web application, whether it's a mobile application, whether it's new hardware. Um, and uh, it was actually when I started thinking about it, I kind of got product hunt, right? I'm like, wow, like they're capturing all those people, right? They're probably not even capturing it's almost, it's almost like a test bed. For, for these ideas. And I mean, I guess it can like give false signaling <laughs> with like, by getting like a huge lift early on. And it, it's, it obviously can't be your sole acquisition channel, but, um, but yeah, it's a, but, it, but what I'm saying is product hunt is almost an expression of sort of the, the, the benefits of, you know, all these cheap tools, inexpensive tools and, and kind of globalization and the internet. Right. So this is like, if something like product hunt wasn't around, like you'd have to invent it. It would come. It was something like this would emerge anyways, right? Where people can share the, all the things that they're they're inventing and building and and, and, and having fun with. Nice. And so, so I'm glad you mentioned like the cheap tools again, and and showing what they're what they're creating, what they're passionate about. And so you know, along obviously with C Blank and Eric Reich, you know, you're one of the most well known thought leaders in like the startup lean startup methodology, etc. Like, how would you describe the relationship between lean and growth hacking, if there is a relationship. Right. Uh, I think they're very similar, right? So the, you know, at the heart of lean is, uh, is uh, ex aggressive experimentation, right? So like uh, Eric's cycle is build, measure, learn. I think you take that same cycle and you think about growth hacking. Um, and uh, so I, I don't see uh, any huge sort of philosophical differences or issues. Um, you know, a lot of the growth hacking folks today are also sort of ex-SEOs, for better or for worse, where they sort of rebrand themselves as, as quote-unquote growth hackers. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that per se, um, uh, but uh, they tend to have, they can be very interesting 
sort of group of people sometimes. Let's just leave it at that. <laughs> uh, I love them, uh, but they... Uh, we'll, we'll get you mint juleps next time and you can go deeper. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, no, I mean, look at the heart. I think it's aggressive experimentation and, uh, and, uh, and you know, uh, in growth hacking, right, you're, you're trying to innovate on how you get to your customers and how you acquire them fundamentally, right? Mm-hmm. So, to me, it's sort of like peanut butter and jelly. Uh, um, and uh, to me, I think it's very, very, very similar. Nice. So, you know, we're, we're coming up on an hour and uh, just have a couple more questions. Um, I know uh, you and I will be covering this a bunch over at the, the Europe events and, and stuff both you and I have done uh, in the U.S. already. Uh, but what, what advice would you give kind of startups or tinkers or whatnot in the early stage to kind of maybe test their ideas and then, and, you know, kind of get that, get that initial traction, you know, whether it's worked, worked for you or, you know, worked with people you know, you know quite, quite well? So the, the the first thing is just do something like and do even if it's a small thing do yes. something like like I don't know how many people I know that have grandiose ideas that depend on like like this idea would be cool if I got this much money and this person worked with me and I could do this and this and this and this and this and then I would have like a gazillion dollars like do something that you yourself can do it doesn't have to be super great it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, can you go find someone on Odesk or Elance or Fiverr to help you out? Just do something, right? You can build from there. So, like, well, like, like your, like your, like a uh, entrepreneur's guide to customer development. Ab- it works absolutely. great. Yeah. But yeah. Self-published to New York Times bestseller. Absolutely right. Like we would have never had a chance. Brant and I would have never had a chance to do a New York Times bestselling book had we not uh, written the entrepreneur's guide to customer development, right? And so, like, just do something um, is, is sort of the number one thing to do. Uh, two is, again, there's so many cheap tools out there that you can use. And, like, I don't know how many, again, how many startups I've run into. They're like, oh, we did this cool explainer video. I'm like, okay, how much you spend? They're like, $9,000. I'm like, are you insane? Like, you, like, you know how much they could buy you on Fiverr? I'm like, if you're well-funded or you're doing well, fine. Okay, just pay $9,000. But, like, otherwise, take, you know, the Wistia approach. Right and build your little home studio for hundred bucks. Tinker around there, uh, and you can do a lot. You can really be. You can really leverage. Right. So that's I would really encourage that. And that's something we still do today at um, at Superpower. Mm-hmm. You know, like we did this that infographic. Uh, we had this really cool infographic that illustrated the Android audio latency path, and we had this guy do it for us. I think it was like hundred bucks or something. Right, and like. Hundred bucks, it was well worth it, right? At, the, at that, that that price point, uh, and we got to iterate on multiple times. So, so that's another thing. Like, you, there's a lot you can do for very little money. You just have to hustle, right? And and uh, uh, and perfection is not the key. Progress and forward motion is really what you want to concentrate on. So hustle, exactly. Get in there, Karina. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> awesome. Cool. Well, huge thanks. Um, I'm sure everybody appreciates this. Uh, I know I always learn a bunch. Uh, you want to end off any any notes, and uh, how can how can people contact you further? Sure. So um, so my website, which I haven't updated uh, forever, it's my last name, so it's Vlaskovitz at dot com. V l a s k o v i t s dot com. Uh, I'm really easy to find on Twitter. It's the letter P as in Patrick. The letter V as in Vlaskovitz at P V. That's probably the best way. Um, and then uh, I don't monitor at Growth Hacker, but I have that Twitter handle as well. Um, and uh, then we do Growth Ship. And so if you if anyone's out in Europe this summer, come come ping me, come say hi, come to the event. Uh, also, yeah. these days I live in Austin with my family, so if you're in Austin, uh, come find me. Maybe we'll get a uh, we'll get a drink. Maybe we'll get a mint julep together. <laughs> your 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 paddle board is getting dusty. I know. I gotta. Uh, I gotta figure this. I gotta figure out the, the water situation out here. I know some spots in California. Oh. So, anyways, on that note, thanks a lot. And um, yeah, if you guys have any questions, leave it in the comments or um, hit up Patrick. You can hit me up at at K C A C A S E Y A. And thank you very much. Thanks. Bye.